Welcome to Section 4 of Science of the Pole Shift, Modern Evidence. Shown here is a second sun sighting, which is sunlight refracted through the tail of Nibiru and aimed at the Earth, captured by Great Britain's Sun newspaper in October 2017. I'll show the full video at the end of this section. When the Nibiru system entered our inner solar system in March 2003, it parked itself next to the sun. Shortly afterwards, the Earth wobble began, very small at first, increasing every year since. Also in 2003, the first images of the Nibiru system began appearing on the internet. Here are a few notable images. Google Sky uses old NASA satellite images, and one of them caught Nibiru incoming decades ago. Strangely, that section of Google Sky was blacked out until June 2015, but is now online for anyone to see. Notice the globe with wings vibe. An astronomer in North Carolina captured Nibiru in this photo from 2003. Look closely and you can see the moons in its tail. And the Nibiru system pops up on NASA's SOHO satellite from time to time. SOHO stands for Solar and Heliospheric Observatory Satellite. Here is a clear capture from 2009. Note how the tail looks like wings, just like those old Egyptian carvings. And just to make it painfully obvious for you, here is the close-up of the Nibiru system from NASA's SOHO satellite, and here are some ancient carvings of Nibiru from the Middle East, from 1600 BC. Do you see the resemblance? Is it coming together for you? This is all real, my friends. It's been 3600 years, and it is time for another passage. The end of this cycle and the start of the new Earth. Researchers track Nibiru with the use of chemical filters on their telescopes. The filter makes the images hazy, but allows us to see how Nibiru shifts position relative to the Earth. Every time Nibiru shifts position, the Earth wobble changes, tweaking our weather. This is why some areas for example, will su suffer a harsh drought for three years straight and then suddenly get record-breaking rain and snow on the fourth year. It's because right before that fourth year, Nibiru changed its position, which tweaked the jet stream. Webcams around the world have caught the Nibiru system hundreds of times when the atmospheric conditions create what is known as a monster persona, where a planet appears much larger and closer than it really is. Here is a small sampling from Alaska 2016, the Netherlands in 2017, and Italy in 2018. There are many signs that Nibiru is in our solar system. Thousands of pages worth, in fact. I could show how the Earth's magnetis magnetosphere has collapsed from Nibiru's particle flows from time to time. We could discuss the recent oddities in the Schumann resonance. You could look, look into that one yourself, or I could show the abnormal tilt to the face of the moon, or how the sun doesn't always rise and set in the right place or time, the expected place or time, and that's due to the earth wobble. You can check the, into these yourself, by the way. But to do all that in this presentation would bog us down in a lot of math and graphs and stuff. So let's focus instead on pretty pictures, which illustrate the most dramatic and noticeable signs that Nibiru is indeed in our solar system right now. Number one, the churning of the Earth's core creates warming of the oceans from the bottoms up, leading to global warming. Number two, the closer Nibiru gets, the bigger the Earth wobble, which makes the jet stream lurch around, breaking weather records all over the planet. Number three, the churning of the core plus the wobble make Earth's tectonic plates bump and grind, giving us more and bigger earthquakes and volcanic eruptions all over the world. Number four, the stretching and compressing tectonic plates create fractures in the soil, cracks, and sinkholes. Number five, this same plate movement releases methane gas trapped in the soil, which can kill off animals. Six, the rust and the oil in Nibiru's tail settle into the Earth's atmosphere, creating rainbow clouds and turning snow and water orange and red. And finally, number seven, sunlight gets refracted down the tail of Nibiru like a fiber optic cable. And when the conditions are right, it projects a beam of light onto our planet, resulting in a second sun sighting, which looks like another smaller orb of light next to the sun, next to the regular sun. When Nibiru entered our solar system in 2003, our inner solar system, its magnetic field started churning the Earth's iron core, heating up the crust below the oceans, which in turn started heating the oceans from the bottom up. In a peer-reviewed study published in the Nature Science Journal in 2004, 
Researchers show how the deepest waters of the North Pacific warmed significantly across the entire width of the ocean basin. In another article published to Life Science in 2013, they express surprise how deeply they find the ocean's waters heating, not just at the surface. And in 2015, NASA's JPL Labs published a story stating that the deepest parts of the ocean have been heating up the most. I don't know why they think that would be a surprise. And you can see from this chart showing heat at different depths that right around 2004, the bottom of, of the ocean started heating up drastically. So right when Nibiru started blasting Earth with its magnetic field, we start seeing heating of the ocean. A few more articles about heating from the bottom up. From June 2013, the Antarctic's ice shelves are melting from the bottom up, not from the top down. From July 2013, warming in the deep ocean may be unprecedented. From June 2017, new study confirms that oceans are warming rapidly. So every day when Earth's magnetic north pole swings around to face Nibiru, and our magnetic north pole is right over Greenland and it's rapidly moving towards Siberia, I believe, Nibiru's magnetic north pole gives us a push, creating a wobble in the Earth's rotation. This Earth wobble started in 2004 and has intensified since that time. Mainstream science has tried to explain the Earth wobble in a variety of amusing ways. Amusing to me. Earthquakes are causing the Earth to wobble, we are told by National Geographic way back in 2011. CNBC says, scientists just figured out what's causing the Earth to wobble. You read on and it says, droughts. Droughts are causing the Earth to wobble. No wait, according to The Guardian, it's melting ice sheets. Melting ice sheets are changing the way the Earth wobbles on its axis. Or maybe uh, it's fossil fuels, according to Cosmos from October 2016. Why is the Earth's axis shifting? It's, it's burning fossil fuels. Oh, I don't know. Let's just blame it on global warming, like we blame everything else from April 2016. NASA says global warming is now changing how the Earth wobbles. Here's another one. Humans are causing Earth to wobble as it spins, NASA finds. Okay, so um, the, you see what they're doing here. The, the scientific es establishment realizes that the Earth is wobbly and measure it every day, and that the wobble is getting so big that regular folks are starting to notice it. So they feel they have to put a bunch of fake reasons out and cover stories out there. God forbid they actually mention that there's an extra planet in our solar system. Can you imagine the panic? You saw how people panicked or panic bought toilet paper during the uh, mild flu epidemic of 2020. Can you imagine what people would do if mainstream media came out and confirmed there was an extra planet in our solar system? Global warming and the Earth wobble combine to drive the jet stream absolutely nuts. This leads to record-breaking weather, as we have been seeing for over a decade. Every year, it seems that more weather records get broken than the previous year. In 2017, we had record snowfall in the Sierras and more Category 4 hurricanes than ever recorded in history ever. From March 2015 in the Washington Post, global warming is messing with the jet stream and your weather. From June of 2016, scientists declare global climate emergency after jet stream crosses the equator. This had never happened before, by the way, the jet stream crossing the equator. From February 2018, North Pole surges above freezing in the dead of winter. That's not normal. Stunning scientists. The temperature at the North Pole is supposed to be minus 40 degrees in winter. Notice how the Earth wobble has displaced the coldest weather to over Siberia, that big purple blue splotch on the graphic. Well, the North Pole got a sudden rush of warmer air, that red reddish splotch. That's wobble weather, okay? And who remembers the Siberian Express from 2015? Arctic air as far south as Florida, breaking records and wreaking havoc over the East Coast. These are all results of a crazy jet stream caused by the Earth wobble along with the warming oceans. Here is a chart about increasing earthquakes. This is from the USGS, United States Geological Survey, showing the surge in Oklahoma earthquakes. Oklahoma sits adjacent to the New Madrid fault line. And since 2003, Oklahoma has gone from being one of the least seismically active regions in the world to the most seismically active region in the world. Mainstream science likes to blame fracking. 
But fracking for oil doesn't explain the deep crustal shifting being experienced all over the Midwest right now. And how about all the other parts of the world that have a whole bunch of new fracking but have seen no increases in earthquakes? Hmm. As you can see from the second chart by the USGS, it's not just Oklahoma. The entire U.S. is seeing an increase in earthquakes. You see how the number starts to rise right after the 2003-2004 time frame when Nibiru started blasting us with its magnetic field. As the tectonic plates shift, they create cracks in the land and sinkholes all over the world. They cause burst water mains and sewer lines, they pull fiber optic cables apart on the bottoms of the ocean, and they make bridges sag and fall. When the tectonic plates crumple, stretch, and shift, they can release methane gas trapped beneath the surface. If the methane gas gets released from the floor of an ocean or lake, it will rise in a bubble to the surface, killing fish in its path. Methane released from land can get blown into a valley, killing livestock, or rise up into the sky, killing flocks of birds. Whales and other mammals use the Earth's magnetic field for navigation, and as you now know, the Earth's magnetic field is getting scrambled by the magnetic field of Nibiru on a regular basis, causing whales to beach themselves. I just saw an article today, 400 whales dead in um, South America somewhere because they all beached themselves. So they are not just happening, they are happening more and more. Increased animal die-offs are one of the principal warning signs that Nibiru is drawing near. Rainbow clouds often get mentioned in the news when they appear as they make a big impression on eyewitnesses who spot them. They are caused by the oily elements in the tail of Nibiru wafting through the atmosphere, much like an oily puddle in a parking lot it shows rainbows across its surface. I was born in 1971 and I went my whole life never seeing a single rainbow cloud until just a couple years ago. And since then I have seen them half a dozen times, so they are definitely becoming more common as Nibiru approaches. A few more instances from the mainstream news. June 2011, did you see San Diego's magical rainbow clouds? February 2017, incredible fire rainbow cloud phenomenon creates stunning sky display over Singapore. April 2017, rare sighting of incredible unicorn rainbow clouds spotted slicing across the sky over Pagadian City in the Philippines. And from June 2018, you don't need rain for these rainbows spotted over Ottawa, Canada. And the, these rainbow clouds, are, they're happening so often now, along with sun dogs. That's another thing to look into. Sun dogs, that's from the oil in the tail of Nibiru in our atmosphere. They're happening so often that they're not even making the news anymore. So keep an eye out. You might see some rainbow clouds soon yourself. Remember that the tail of Nibiru is filled with red iron oxide dust, which is rust, essentially. This gives the Nibiru system its red appearance in the sky. When the tail lashes the earth from time to time, the oil and rust settle into our atmosphere and sometimes fall to the ground. Back in 2018, uh, an occurrence in Russia illustrated this nicely. Freak weather, orange snowstorm, submerges tourist resorts with eerie apocalyptic scenes. A snowstorm in Sochi, Russia dumped oily red dust all over the mountains. Mainstream media was quick to blame dust from the Sahara because, you know, that happens never. But according to Russia's environmental watchdog agency, the snow was malodorous, oily, and contained four times the normal level of iron, like, like rust. So does dust from the Sahara Desert have oily rust in it? No. This was a textbook example of red dust falling to earth from the tail of Nibiru. And we can expect this type of thing to happen more often as the pole shift approaches. We see carvings of second suns and winged suns from around the time of the last pole shift in 1600 BC. These second sun sightings are caused by Nibiru's tail acting like a fiber optic cable, focusing light down its length and projecting it onto the earth whenever the tail is pointed at the earth. It's not always pointed at the earth. Second sun sightings like these have been on the increase since 2003, captured on film and video around the world. Here are a few examples. 2014, see the reflection on the water, so you know it's not a lens flare. Uh, 2015 from Indonesia, a really big second sun. Um, another a YouTube video from Florida, 2015, you see the second sun is shrouded partially by the clouds. That's how you know it's not a defect in the lens and from Wales 2017. New videos of legitimate second sun sightings are popping up every week now on the internet. You can find some yourself by going to YouTube and typing in second sun or two suns. 
you will have to wade through a lot of, of crap disinfo and nonsense videos, but if you are willing to sift through a few pages of search results, you can find some really neat and compelling captures. The best ones show a second reflection over water, or the cameraman will rotate his camera to prove that the second sun is not just a lens flare or a camera defect. A lot of people take they take pictures of sun dogs, or they'll have just a lens flare in their camera and they think it's like another planet or something and they're freaking out. So, you know, people don't know what's real and what's fake either. You have to have, have, have some uh, technical proficiency to figure that out. A well-publicized example of a second sun dust event happened on October 16th, 2017, a month after I first put this presentation together. It was a textbook tail lashing. It occurred in the UK, complete with red dust in the air and on the ground, red dust in the sky, a red sun at midday, and there were no fires, no forest fires or brush wildfires in, in the UK at this time, and a second sun sighting. This makes sense since when the tail of Nibiru is, is pointing towards the Earth, it focuses the sun's light along its length like a fiber optic cable, shining a beam of light onto the Earth from the direction of Nibiru. This sighting happened in midday, and hundreds of people took video of it with their smartphones. Hurricane Ophelia was also nearby, and that helped pull the dust down into the lower atmosphere. The media was quick to put out a cover story, blaming dust from the Sahara. Again, that's their go-to cover story for these red dust events. They say it's dust from the Sahara Desert, and calling the second sun sighting a trick of the light, quote-unquote. But again, imagine the panic if they were to confidently state on the news that an extra planet was in our solar system, showering us with dust. Yeah, that would not go well. So here is the video playing that came out after that red dust event and second sun sighting in uh, over London in 2017. You see the second sun there, and you're going to see it fade in. Clouds move in front of it. That's how you know it's not a just a defect in the lens or a lens flare, that kind of thing. So it, that was that was a fascinating, compelling one for me to see because it was so widespread, and we had so many different sources showing the same phenomena that you, you just couldn't deny it. You couldn't say, oh, that was, that didn't happen. That was, somebody's faking that, you know, oh, that's a Photoshop thing.